Hello, and welcome to Pluto. Pluto's orbital period is currently about 248 years. Its orbital characteristics are substantially different from those of the planets, which follow nearly circular orbits around the sun, close to a flat reference plane called the ecliptic. In contrast, Pluto's orbit is moderately inclined relative to the ecliptic, over 17 degrees, and moderately eccentric or elliptical. This eccentricity means a small region of Pluto's orbit lies closer to the Sun than Neptune's. The Pluto Charon Barycenter came to perihelion on September 5th of 1989 and was last closer to the Sun than Neptune between February 7th of 1979 and February 11th of 1999. Although the 3 to 2 resonance with Neptune is maintained, Pluto's inclination and eccentricity behave in a chaotic manner. Computer simulations can be used to predict its position for several million years, both forward and backward in time. But after intervals much longer than the Lyapunov time of 10 to 20 million years, calculations become unreliable. Pluto is sensitive to immeasurably small details of the solar system, hard to predict factors that will gradually change Pluto's position in its orbit. The semi-major axis of Pluto's orbit varies between about 39.3 and 39.6 astronomical units, with a period of about 19,951 years, corresponding to an orbital period varying between 246 and 249 years. The semi-major axis and period are presently getting longer. Despite Pluto's orbit appearing to cross that of Neptune when viewed from directly above, the two objects' orbits do not intersect. When Pluto is closest to the Sun and close to Neptune's orbit is viewed from above, it is also the farthest above Neptune's path. Pluto's orbit passes about 8 astronomical units above that of Neptune, preventing a collision. This alone is not enough to protect Pluto. Turbations from the planets, especially Neptune, could alter Pluto's orbit, such as, such as its orbital precession over millions of years, so that the collision could be possible. However, Pluto is also protected by its 2 to 3 orbital resonance with Neptune. For every two orbits that Pluto makes around the Sun, Neptune will make three. Each cycle lasts about 495 years. There are many other objects in this same resonance called Plutinos. This pattern is such that in each 495 year cycle, the first time Pluto is near perihelion, Neptune is over 50 degrees behind Pluto. By Pluto's second perihelion, Neptune will have completed a further one and a half of its own orbits and so will be nearly 130 degrees ahead of Pluto. Pluto and Neptune's minimum separation is over 17 astronomical units, which is greater than Pluto's minimum separation from Uranus, which is 11 astronomical units. The minimum separation between Pluto and Neptune actually occurs near the time of Pluto's aphelion. The 2 to 3 resonance between the two bodies is highly stable and has been preserved over millions of years. This prevents their orbits from changing relative to one another, and so the two bodies can never pass near each other. Even if Pluto's orbit were not inclined, the two bodies could never collide. The long-term stability of the mean motion resonance is due to phase protection. When Pluto's period is slightly shorter than three-halves of Neptune, its orbit relative to Neptune will drift, causing it to make closer approaches behind Neptune's orbit. The gravitational pull between the two then causes angular momentum to be transferred to Pluto at Neptune's expense. This moves Pluto into a slightly larger orbit where it travels slightly more slowly, according to Kepler's third law. After many such repetitions, Pluto is sufficiently slowed so that Pluto's orbit relative to Neptune 
drifts in the opposite direction until the process is reversed. This process takes about 20,000 years to complete the cycle. Numerical studies have shown that over millions of years, the general nature of the alignment between the orbits of Pluto and Neptune does not change. There are several other resonances and interactions that enhance Pluto's stability. These arise principally from two additional mechanisms besides the two to three mean motion resonance. First, Pluto's argument of perihelion, the angle between the point where it crosses the ecliptic and the point where it is closest to the sun, liberates around 90 degrees. This means that when Pluto is closest to the sun, it is at its farthest above the plane of the solar system, preventing encounters with Neptune. This is a consequence of the Kozai mechanism, which relates the eccentricity of an orbit to its inclination to a larger perturbing body, in this case Neptune. Relative to Neptune, the amplitude of libration is 38 degrees, and so the angular separation of Pluto's perihelion to the orbit of Neptune is always greater than 52 degrees. The closest such angular separation occurs every 10,000 years. Second, the longitudes of ascending nodes of the two bodies, to the points where they cross the ecliptic, are in near resonance with the above libration. When the two longitudes are the same, that is, when one could draw a straight line through both nodes and the sun, Pluto's perihelion lies exactly at 90 degrees, and hence it comes closest to the sun when it is highest above Neptune's orbit. This is known as the one-to-one -one super resonance. All the Jovian planets, particularly Jupiter, play a role in the creation of the super resonance. In 2012, it was hypothesized that 15810 Arawan could be a quasi-satellite of Pluto, a specific type of co-orbital configuration. According to the hypothesis, the object would be a quasi-satellite of Pluto for about 350,000 years out of every 2 million year period. Measurements made by the New Horizons spacecraft in 2015 made it possible to calculate the orbit of Arawan more accurately. These calculations confirm the overall dynamics described in the hypothesis. However, it is not agreed upon among astronomers whether Arawan should be classified as a quasi-satellite of Pluto based on this motion, since its orbit is primarily controlled by Neptune, with only occasional smaller perturbations caused by Pluto. Pluto's rotation period, its day, is equal to six 0.387 Earth days. Like Uranus, Pluto rotates on its side in its orbital plane with an axial tilt of 120 degrees, and so its seasonal variation is extreme. At its solstices, one fourth of its surface is in continuous daylight, whereas another fourth is in continuous darkness. The reason for this unusual orientation has been debated. Research from the University of Arizona has suggested that it may be due to the way that the body's spin will always adjust to minimize energy. This could mean a body reorienting itself to put extraneous mass near the equator, and regions lacking mass tend toward the poles. This is called polar wander. According to a paper released from the University of Arizona, this could be caused by masses of frozen nitrogen building up in shadowed areas of the dwarf planet. These masses would cause the body to reorient itself, leading to its unusual axial tilt of 120 degrees. The buildup of nitrogen is due to Pluto's vast distance from the sun. At the equator, temperatures can drop to negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit, causing nitrogen to freeze as water would freeze on Earth. The same effect seen on Pluto would be observed on Earth or the Antarctic ice sheet, several times larger. The plains on Pluto's surface are composed of more than 98% nitrogen ice, with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. Nitrogen and carbon monoxide are most abundant on the anti-Sharon face of Pluto, around 180 degrees longitude where Tombaugh Reggio's western lobe, Sputnik Planeta, is located. 
whereas methane is most abundant near 300 degrees east. The mountains are made of water ice. Pluto's surface is quite varied, with large differences in both brightness and color. Pluto is one of the most contrastive bodies in the solar system, with as much contrast as Saturn's moon, Epicus. The color varies from charcoal black to dark orange and white. Pluto's color is more similar to that of Io, with slightly more orange and significantly less red than Mars. Notable geographical features include Tomba Regio, or the heart, a large, bright area on the side opposite Charon. Cthulhu Macula, or the whale, a large, dark area on the trailing hemisphere. And the brass knuckles, a series of equatorial dark areas on the leading hemisphere. Sputnik Planeta, the western lobe of the heart, is a 1,000 kilometer wide basin of frozen nitrogen and carbon monoxide ices divided into polygonal cells which are interpreted as convection cells that carry floating blocks of water ice crust and sublimation pits toward their margins. There are obvious signs of glacial flows both into and out of the basin. It has no craters that were visible to New Horizons, indicating that its surface is less than 10 million years old. Latest studies have shown that the surface has an age of approximately 180,000 years. The New Horizons science team summarized initial findings as Pluto displays a surprisingly wide variety of geological landforms, including those resulting from glaciological and surface atmosphere interactions, as well as impact, tectonic, possible cryovolcanic, and mass wasting processes. In western parts of Sputnik Planeta, there are fields of transverse dunes formed by the winds blowing from the center of Sputnik Planeta in the direction of surrounding mountains. The dune wavelengths are in the range of 0.4 to 1 kilometer, and they are likely consisting of methane particles 200 to 300 micrometers in size. Pluto's density is 1.860 plus or minus 0.013 grams per cubic centimeter. Because the decay of radioactive elements would eventually heat the ices enough for the rock to separate from them, scientists expect that Pluto's internal structure is differentiated, with the rocky material having settled into a dense core surrounded by a mantle of water ice. The pre-New Horizons estimate for the diameter of the core is 1,700 kilometers, or 70% of Pluto's diameter. Pluto has no magnetic field. It is possible that such heating continues today, creating a subsurface ocean of liquid water 100 to 180 kilometers thick at the core mantle boundary. In September of 2016, scientists at Brown University simulated the impact thought to have formed Sputnik Planeta and showed that it might have been the result of liquid water upwelling from below after the collision implying the existence of a subsurface ocean at least 100 kilometers deep. In June of 2020, astronomers reported evidence that Pluto may have had a subsurface ocean and consequently may have been habitable when it was first formed. Pluto's diameter is 2,376.6 plus or minus 3.2 kilometers and its mass is 1.303 plus or minus 0 0.003 times 10 to the 22nd power kilograms, 17.7% that of the moon, 0.22% that of the earth. Its surface area is 1.779 times 10 to the 7th kilometers squared, and roughly the same surface area as Russia. Its surface gravity is 0.063 g compared to 1 g for the earth, and 0 0.17 g for the moon. The discovery of Pluto's satellite Charon in 1978 enabled a determination of the mass of the Pluto-Charon system by application of Newton's formulation of Kepler's third law. Observations of Pluto in occultation with Charon allowed scientists to establish Pluto's diameter more accurately, whereas the invention of adaptive optics allowed them to determine its shape more accurately. With less than 0.2 lunar masses, 
Pluto is much less massive than the terrestrial planets and also less massive than seven moons. Ganymede, Titan, Callisto, Io, the moon, Europa, and Triton. The mass is much less than thought before Charon was discovered. Pluto is more than twice the diameter and a dozen times the mass of Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt. It is less massive than the dwarf planet Eris, a trans-Neptunian object discovered in 2005, where Pluto has a larger diameter of 2,376.6 kilometers, compared to Eris's approximate diameter of 2,326 kilometers. Determinations of Pluto's size have been complicated by its atmosphere and a hydrocarbon haze. In March of 2014, Lodov de Berg et al. published findings regarding methane mixing ratios in Pluto's atmosphere consistent with a Plutonian diameter greater than 2,360 kilometers, with a best guess of 2,368 kilometers. On July 13th of 2015, images from NASA's New Horizons mission Long Range Reconnaissance Imager, along with data from the other instruments, determined Pluto's diameter to be 2,370 kilometers was later revised to be 2,372 kilometers on July 24th, and later to 2,374 plus or minus 8 kilometers. Using radio occultation data from the New Horizons radio science experiment, the diameter was found to be 2,376.6 plus or minus 3.2 kilometers. Pluto has a tenuous atmosphere consisting of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide, which are in equilibrium with their ices on Pluto's surface. According to the measurements by New Horizons, the surface pressure is about one pascal, or roughly one million to one hundred thousand times less than Earth's atmospheric pressure. It was initially thought that, as Pluto moves away from the Sun, its atmosphere should gradually freeze onto the surface. Studies of New Horizons data and ground-based occultations show that Pluto's atmospheric density increases and that it likely remains gaseous throughout Pluto's orbit. New Horizons observations showed that atmospheric escape of nitrogen to be 10,000 times less than expected. Alan Stern has contended that even a small increase in Pluto's surface temperature can lead to exponential increases in Pluto's atmospheric density. From 18 hectopascals to as much as 280 hectopascals, three times that of Mars to a quarter that of the Earth. At such densities, nitrogen could flow across the surface as liquid, just like sweat cools the body as it evaporates from the skin. The sublimation of Pluto's atmosphere cools its surface. The presence of atmospheric gases was traced up to 1,670 kilometers high. The atmosphere does not have a sharp upper boundary. In July of 2019, an occultation by Pluto showed that its atmospheric pressure against expectations had fallen by 20% since 2016. In 2021, astronomers at the Southwest Research Institute confirmed the result using data from the occultation in 2018, which showed that light was appearing less gradually from behind Pluto's disk indicating a thinning atmosphere. The presence of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, in Pluto's atmosphere creates a temperature inversion with the average temperature of its atmosphere tens of degrees warmer than its surface. Though observations by New Horizons have revealed Pluto's upper atmosphere to be far colder than expected, 70 Kelvin as opposed to about 100 Kelvin. Pluto's atmosphere is divided into roughly 20 regularly spaced haze layers up to 150 kilometers high, thought to be the result of pressure waves created by airflow across Pluto's mountains. Pluto's origin and identity had long puzzled astronomers. One early hypothesis was that Pluto was an escaped moon of Neptune, knocked out of orbit by Neptune's largest current moon, Triton. This idea was eventually rejected after dynamical studies showed it to be impossible because Pluto never approaches Neptune in its orbit. Pluto's true place in the solar system began to reveal itself only in 1992 when astronomers began to find small icy objects beyond Neptune that
that was similar to Pluto, not only in orbit, but also in size and composition. This trans-Neptunian population is thought to be the source of many short-period comets. Pluto is now known to be the largest member of the Kuiper Belt, a stable belt of objects located between 30 to 50 astronomical units from the Sun. As of 2011, surveys of the Kuiper Belt to magnitude 21 were nearly complete, and any remaining Pluto-sized objects are expected to be beyond 100 astronomical units from the Sun. Like other Kuiper Belt objects, Pluto shares features with comets. For example, the solar wind is gradually blowing Pluto's surface into space. It has been claimed that if Pluto were placed as near to the Sun as Earth, it would develop a tail, as comets do. This claim has been disputed with the argument that Pluto's escape velocity is too high for this to happen. It has been proposed that Pluto may have formed as a result of the agglomeration of numerous comets and Kuiper Belt objects. Though Pluto is the largest Kuiper Belt object discovered, Neptune's moon Triton, which is slightly larger than Pluto, is similar to it, both geologically and atmospherically, and is thought to be a captured Kuiper Belt object. Eris is about the same size as Pluto, though more massive, but is not strictly considered a member of the Kuiper Belt population. Rather, it is considered a member of a linked population called the Scattered Disk. A large number of Kuiper Belt objects, like Pluto, are in a 2-3 to three orbital resonance with Neptune. Kuiper Belt objects with this orbital resonance are called Plutinos, after Pluto. Like other members of the Kuiper Belt, Pluto is thought to be a residual planetesimal, a component of the original protoplanetary disk around the Sun that failed to fully coalesce into a full-fledged planet. Most astronomers agree that Pluto owes its current position to a sudden migration undergone by Neptune early in the solar system's formation. As Neptune migrated outward, it approached the objects in the proto-Kuiper belt, setting one in orbit around itself, Triton locking others into resonances and knocking others into chaotic orbits. The objects in the scattered disk, a dynamically unstable region overlapping the Kuiper belt, are thought to have been placed in their current positions by interactions with Neptune's migrating resonances. A computer model created in 2004 by Alessandro Morbidelli in Nice suggested that the migration of Neptune into the Kuiper Belt may have been triggered by the formation of a 1-2 to two resonance between Jupiter and Saturn, which created a gravitational push that propelled both Uranus and Neptune into higher orbits and caused them to switch places, ultimately doubling Neptune's distance from the Sun. The resultant expulsion of objects from the proto-Kuiper Belt could also explain the late heavy bombardment 600 million years after the solar system's formation and the origin of the Jupiter Trojans. It is possible that Pluto had a near circular orbit, about 33 astronomical units from the Sun, before Neptune's migration perturbed it into a resonant capture. The Nice model requires that there were about a thousand Pluto-sized bodies in the original planetesimal disk, which included Triton and Eris. I thank you for taking this tour of Pluto with me and I hope that you have enjoyed it.